This week, Smart Suite has released the Button Row widget, which now allows users to go and connect a button that can link to an external URL or run a basic script directly inside of dashboards. This allows you quick access to important actions like linking to a form or linking to some external site without ever leaving the dashboard. Each button can be styled and configured the way that you want to, so you have full control over how it looks and what it does. Let's jump into it. So the button row is a customizable widget that exists within dashboards. If you are not familiar with dashboards already, we have a ton of really great content, both in our help articles and our YouTube channel that go over the basics and the complexities of dashboards. So I will link those down below in the description. But essentially, this button row is just a widget that you can add to any one dashboard and then customize the way that makes sense for your workflow. So in order to create a dashboard, what you're going to do is you're going to go to any one table and then you're going to go and create a new view. So you go to the left hand side and then you can click here at the bottom where it says create new view. Then we're going to scroll and we're going to see dashboard. We're going to select it and we're going to go and create the view. Now, as you probably know, dashboards are an empty slate. You can go and design a dashboard that makes sense for your workflow so that you can visualize and reach data quickly. So I just added a really simple grid view right here so we can have some context into the button row. But what we're going to do first is we're going to make sure that edit mode is on in the dashboard. So if you see this checked off, make sure it is checked towards edit. Once it's in edit mode, you will see this add widget button. You're going to click on this and then search for the button row widget. And then you just click plus and then you can start going into the settings. So as you can see here, we're in the general tab. So the heading for the button row is pretty self-explanatory. We're going to have a title that's going to be the title for the widget. And then we can optionally add a description. So let's go add a description. We'll just check this off. And then we'll say, this is a description. And then we can decide on whether we want that description to show as a tooltip, which means that it's going to have this little eye icon right here, or we can decide to display that beneath the title. Now let's go to the interesting stuff. We are here at the buttons. So each of these three different rows are going to represent the buttons that exist on the screen. We can reorder these buttons by clicking these six dots and dragging them around. And then we can delete them by clicking this trash icon. Additionally, if we wanted to add a new button, we would just click add button right here and then start inputting the information. So when you're going and creating a new button, you're going to first want to create a label. So let's make a button that can link to a request form so that at any point you can go click on the button and it will link out to a smart suite form. So let's go and title this request form. And then we can add a tooltip if we want. We'll just call this tooltip just to show you what it looks like. And then we can display an icon that's going to show on the side, just like over here, it shows the cog next to features. So we have a lot of different options in our icon library that you can choose from. Let's click the, the Bluetooth button. And then we can choose a color that makes sense for this button. Let's go and pick this teal. Now, the most important part, which is the action. We can decide on whether we want to link to an external URL or run a script. So for this form, we're going to just link to an external URL. And then we would just paste the URL of our form here. So now that we have the URL pasted, we can decide whether we want to open this in a new tab or if we want to just open it in the same tab and replace the dashboard. For this, we'd probably want to open this in a new tab. Then we have the option for asking for confirmation. So when you click on the button, do we want to have a pop-up that asks for confirmation on whether or not they want to navigate to that link? For this, we don't really need to. We'll just keep it with no. So just like that, you can see this request form pops up. And if I click on it, it's going to take me directly to this request form. So now that we have this new button, we can go and delete the default ones. So now that we have this button row, let's go and change the style of it. So we've done everything here in general. Let's go over and navigate to style. So when we click on style, we're going to have two different options for the button size. We're going to have balanced, which essentially means that every single button is going to have the same width and it's going to take up the entirety of the column. So in this case, we have one button and it's taking up the entire thing. But the other option is auto, which means that it's automatically going to adjust the button size based on the length of the label. 
So if this was named request form for new customer ticket, it would be much longer and take up much more of the column. We can also decide on whether we want to adjust this in alignment to either be left adjusted, centered, or right adjusted. In this case, we'll keep this right adjusted. So once we're done making the changes and you just click that button, and then right here, the widget is going to pop up there. And again, if I were to click on this, it's gonna go and take me directly to the form. What if we wanted that button to run a script rather than linking to an external URL? If you're not familiar with HTML or JavaScript, this may not be so relevant to you, but this really opens up the opportunities to make your dashboards that much more useful for your workflows by allowing you to have some level of custom code that you can add to the dashboard. So let's go back to that original dashboard here, and we can see in this external links page, we have two different buttons in a button row. So let's go into the settings for these buttons. And as you can see, we have a start a timer button and a pick a team member button. So let's click this start a timer button. You can create this in any one button. You just have to, rather than say link to an external URL, you would select run a script. And when you select that option, a window is gonna pop up that allows you to go and paste or write your script. So in this case, this is gonna go and start a countdown from 25 minutes. And down here, you can see in the execute option, we can select for that new window to open up in a new tab, in a modal, or on click. Now it is important to note that when you select on click, it must be all written in JavaScript in order to execute. So in this case, we're gonna have this open in a new tab. And then we're gonna select yes to ask for confirmation. When we select yes for the confirmation, we can customize the message that SmartSuite shows to the user. So we can have a title that says, are you sure? We can have an additional description for that message. And then we can have the label of the button that says yes. So these are the basics of SmartSuite's button row. It can really open up the opportunities for using your dashboard as the hub for your workflows, no matter what you're doing because it's fully customizable from the ground up and can make sure that you're interconnected with every ounce of your workflow and your dashboard can mold around your use of it rather than you molding around the dashboard's way of doing things. So if you're enjoying the button row widget, if you've had a chance to try it out, make sure to leave a comment down below, share your thoughts, share any unique use cases that you may have used so far with the button row widget. And until next time, keep on enjoying SmartSuite.